Sports coupes are becoming less and less popular over the last couple of decades. One reason might be baby boomers. They're getting older, so they're looking for comfort and luxury over performance and sportiness. And the other thing is that today's four-door sedans pack so much punch, they actually have the same kind of performance that sports cars only had just a few years ago. But there's no denying that a coupe is a great looking car. Take this brand new 2008 Nissan Ultima Coupe, for example. Looks fantastic. So what you give up in practicality, you gain in styling. Based on the latest Ultima sedan, which we reviewed last year, this coupe shares no body panels with its four-door stablemate. The Ultima Coupe is striking from the swooping front headlights to the curvy rear quarter panels and exhaust tips sticking out the bottom of the car. The large rear lights give the coupe an angular look to complement the flowing organic lines of the roof. One thing that's kind of hard to describe on TV, but I'll do my best, is the view from the rear view mirror. Now the back window looks big on the outside, right? But if you look at the top of the seat to the top of the window, that area there is actually quite slim. So you're always having to adjust your mirror, or at least I had to. Now the trunk, when you open it up, there's a big opening here and the back seats do fold down, but the trunk really is kind of shallow. The Ultima Coupe is sold with two different engines and two corresponding trim levels. The base 2.5S features a four-cylinder, and our test vehicle is the 3.5 SE sporting a V6. The SE is distinguished by the addition of fog lights, 17-inch wheels versus 16-inch wheels on the base model, and available xenon headlights. Coupes are really best for single people, a couple without kids, or as a second car, and here's why. First of all, you've got a big door, so you need lots of space to open that. And if you have to get into the back seat, you slide the seat forward, and you fold yourself in half, wiggle in, slide the seat back, and headroom is definitely at a premium, as is legroom. So this spot is for the shortest member of your family or your shortest friend. The seats up front are much better with plenty of legroom and nicely bolstered with eight-way power adjustment standard on the driver's side, plus they're heated. The coupe is very well appointed, even in the base model. The leather-wrapped steering wheel tilts and telescopes and comes standard with radio controls. The Ultima comes with an intelligent key to open the doors and start the car with a push of a button. Power windows, door locks and AC are all included as is an MP3 jack. Optional equipment includes leather seats, navigation with a backup camera, Bluetooth connectivity, satellite radio and an in-dash 6 CD player. A lot of people looking at this Ultima Coupe will say, that's ah, just a cheaper version of the Infiniti G35 Coupe. Well, that's not the case because this car is front wheel drive and the G35 is a rear wheel or all wheel drive car, even though they both have available three and a half liter V6 engines. And for those that really want the best driving dynamics, they'll opt for a rear wheel drive car. But for an average driver going back and forth to work, an Ultima Coupe like this and front wheel drive will do the trick. As I mentioned, there are two different engine choices, the base 2.5 liter four cylinder with 175 horsepower and the 3.5 liter V6 with almost 100 more horsepower at 270. The V6 gets thicker stabilizer bars front and rear and a sports tuned suspension. So even though this isn't a G35, it still has some scoot. Both trim levels come with a six speed manual transmission as standard equipment. If you want the car to do the shifting for you, then a CVT or continuously variable transmission is the only option. I've said it before that I believe the Nissan CVT is the best on the market and it does a great job of letting the driver forget that it's a continuously variable transmission with preset shift points when the car is in manual mode. My problem is that once the car is away from a light, the revs drop down so low to save fuel that it gives the car a bogged down feel. At highway speeds, the car is smooth and quiet and passes with authority. Now that I'm driving this thing again, I mentioned the rear visibility through that small window. It really kind of bugs me. All right, I've made my point with that. Okay, this vehicle really is not bad at all to drive. It's, it's got a sportier suspension in this three and a half liter V6 version. If you take one out for a test drive and it feels a little bit too bumpy, maybe you want to try the four cylinder, not as sporty. Uh, it comes with either a manual transmission, which I wish they had put in this car for us to drive. This one does an okay job, but if I was going to buy one of these cars, I probably 
wouldn't get the CVT. I'm not a big fan of them, even though Nissan does have the best in the market right now. Well, the Nissan Altima Coupe, it starts at around $28,000, and the V6 is over $31,000. This Nissan Altima looks good, and it has a lot of stuff for the money. And you know what? It rides well as well. So if I was in the market for an import two-door coupe, I would definitely consider the Altima. But you know what? I can't wait to get my hands on the new Honda Accord. Hmm. Now that's a good idea for a comparison show. For complete specs, go to our website at drivingtelevision.com.